Greetings Church, it's uh, Kevin Duclaron once again. Today is uh, Monday the uh, 9th of uh, March 2020 and we are here at Pioneer Square Park. Behind me is the um, Pioneer Square Courthouse and um, all around me is, that's the Pioneer Square uh, Park over there. There's not too many people out today. Uh, the lunch hour has completed just ended about an hour and a half ago and so I'll just show you around the area there's really not too many people um, and uh, that's the train stop right there the max and um, I was supposed to do uh, I'm kind of uh, this is my first and last I guess sermon on eternal life I was <coughs> you'll have to excuse me I was um, gonna do a whole series and the Lord just basically said stop uh, I had already given uh, uh, an, uh, uh, one or maybe two message what the two, uh, another uh, it, basically I can only do one message okay it's uh, the introduction the message before this one and then this one and then he says quit so just three I actually had in mind to do 12, one per, one per year, um, uh, one per month. It's, I had it all outlined here, but um, this was the poster for it, and uh, this, is, uh, this was the book for it. Uh, this was also another poster for it, and, uh, and of course the, the, other, the, uh, the other book that would have gone to the Library of Congress, which has the exact same covering. Uh, however, uh, the Lord says no. So I, I have to obey the Lord and not do uh, otherwise. As much as I want these people to be saved, I think in his mind there's, uh, there's enough information on the internet for them to, um, for them to uh, come to the conclusion that uh, they need to repent of their sins so they can have eternal life. That's the best. He didn't explain to me why he went in that direction. And um, all I could do at this hour is just basically hope and pray that maybe sometime in the future he'll let me go back and do it. But as of right now, this is all that I can do. I mean, I've got, I, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to talk about, but I'll talk about something because I, I, I got to, uh, uh, anyway, let me start. Let me start in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this opportunity to uh, start a series and end a series. Um, and um, maybe in the future you'll give me an opportunity to an opportunity to do this work more thoroughly when I sit down and do more studying. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Per, uh, bless this afternoon's short message and uh, may it be an encouragement to the people. Okay, well, I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> so, you'll excuse me for a second here. I got a, I got a cold. And, uh... <laughs> okay, uh, all right. Good afternoon, Portland. Greetings, in the name of our Lord, Jesus. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of my preaching ministry and who do not know me, my name is Kevin Duclaron. And um, the Lord's been giving me an opportunity to share the gospel with the people of Portland for the last uh, few years. And hoping to uh, plant some seeds in the heart of the American people so that they could be saved. Uh, from their sins and also that they would enter into heaven upon their passing um, I had made a promise to do a series on eternal life this was actually the poster the first poster and uh, this was the second poster when I got to typing it and I was gonna go through the entire thing but for whatever purpose or reason God has asked me to only do three messages. So, and this is the third one. 
but I know for some of you it's probably the first, but this is the third. Um, I had sat here a couple of uh, mornings and did some preaching, and in so doing, uh, made mention of eternal life, so I probably did more than I probably should have done. But in any case, I wanted to talk to you about eternal life. And the question I have is um, why eternal life, why is it that you don't want it? Why is it that you don't want eternal life? Why is it that you prefer eternal damnation? Why do I say this? I say this because when we Christians come out here, and we tell you to repent and believe, Our calling you to repentance and believing is so that you may obtain eternal life. So when you hear preachers say repent and believe, it is because they want you to enter into heaven, and it is in heaven that you will have eternal life. If you go into the scriptures in the Old Testament, It begins by talking about the tree of life. But before I go into this, real quickly, because I'm not going to be preaching for a whole hour here, why is it that you don't want it? Why is it that you don't want to go to heaven? Why is it that you don't want eternal life? Why? Because of sin. Most people prefer sin. They prefer to live a life of sin, the freedom to sin. They prefer the liberty to sin. For some, sin looks good. And as a result of it, people just shun the whole idea of their spirit and their soul needing salvation. And so they focus on the fact that the here and the now, the party time, the getting drunk, the getting drugged, the having sex with, with as many girls as you possibly can. With getting rich. But Jesus says, do not love the world nor the things in the world because the world is passing away and also it's lust. Why is it that most people don't want eternal life? Because they prefer what the world has to offer. What does the world offer? What does the world give? What is it that the world can give you that's not going to decay? What is it that the world can give you that's not going to pass away, get old, get rusty? People think that the man Christ Jesus is never coming. And, and that this whole Christianity thing is a scam. But yet, when you go into Genesis, the Bible says in Genesis that you shall surely die. And when you open up the newspaper, what do you find in there? Every single newspaper, every tribune. The weeping of families at the passing of their loved ones. So if Genesis 2, 17 is true, so is the passages in the Bible that says we need eternal life. And without eternal life, you will what? Get eternal damnation. So it would behoove you, a word that I'm borrowing from a former friend, to do what? Repent and believe. Because if Genesis 2.17 is true, so is eternal damnation and eternal life. Quickly, when you go to Genesis chapter 2, it talks about the tree of life. The tree of life or the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 
We, in our wisdom, chose the tree of knowledge of good and evil rather than the tree of life, which might have been able to give you us eternal life and not death. But for some reason, Eve made the decision and chose death. I'm not sure that was very wise, but that was the choice. When you go into the New Testament, so we have the tree of eternal life. I want to call it the tree of eternal life. The Bible doesn't call it the tree of eternal life, but the Bible calls it the tree of life in Genesis chapter 2. When you go into Colossians chapter 2 verse 14, the Bible talks about the cross, right? The cross of eternal life. Is it possible that God had put the tree in Genesis as an offering to eternal life and the cross in the New Testament as an offering to eternal life and we rejected the tree, we rejected the cross, right? Colossians 2, nailing your sin. He has nailed our sin to the cross, 2.14. And then on top of it all, what does it say in Romans? I just went through the Romans series, right? Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Why don't we read that real quickly? In Romans 8, 1 and 2, the Bible says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. There's no condemnation. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus, isn't that the spirit of eternal life? Isn't that the only spirit that can grant you eternal life? That is the Holy Spirit? Once you have the Holy Spirit, you are His. What does it say? If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, right? The only way you can enter into heaven and have eternal life is through the Spirit. Again, God is reaching out to us through a third way of obtaining eternal life, but you don't want it. The tree of eternal life in Genesis? No. The cross of eternal life through Christ Jesus? No. The Holy Spirit of Pentecost? to get you eternal life if you repent and believe? No. Well, what about the king of eternal life? Christ himself. What about embracing Christ himself as the eternal life? You'd have to read Revelations 4 and 5 to find out about the king of eternal life. He is the king of eternal life. If he's the one that comes down and says, behold, the kingdom of, of God is at hand. Repent and believe. Repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So you've got the tree of eternal life, which we rejected. The cross of eternal life, which we rejected. And in our generation, we burned the cross in the form of the clan, right? The spirit of eternal life. The king of eternal life. And then the kingdom of eternal life. Doesn't that begin here? with being the church? Somebody said you're not straight. Isn't that the condemnation that was pronounced in Romans chapter 1 verses 18 through 32? That all men have been what? Condemned? All men. That means all men, all women, all children. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have turned to his own way but the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. So nobody is outside of that condemnation. But God has given us the tree of eternal life, the cross of eternal life, the spirit of eternal life, the king of eternal life, and the kingdom of eternal life, which we would probably call the New Testament church. And we have rejected, 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 rejected eternal life and instead embrace the devil and instead embrace the serpent. Why? Because we don't want to repent and believe. We don't want to embrace God in any way, shape or form. 
past, present, future, or eternally. This is going to cost us, those of us who do not repent and believe. Would you like to try today by faith and repent and believe? Would you like to give your life to Jesus? If you do, you simply have to close your eyes and say, Father, forgive me for my sin. I repent of my sin. Grant me your Holy Spirit and forgiveness and entrance into heaven so that I may have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all that it takes, people. It doesn't take more than that. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for the people that have heard this message. May you be with each one of them. May you grant them salvation in Christ. Amen.